Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to talk about how to securely manage your Zoom meetings and how to manage meeting participants when you have a lot of meeting uh, participants in your Zoom meeting. Let's jump into it. All right, so we're gonna try to take Zoom meeting security more seriously. I know this is something that a lot of people are talking about right now. And over the past couple weeks, we've been talking about all these cool, interesting ways to use Zoom. And I think it's important for us to talk about the security side of this so that everyone can follow along with what is really important to think about. So in the news right now, Zoom security flaws have been exposed. And the CEO, Eric Yuan, has said on a CNN interview that we've moved too fast and we've made some missteps. And uh, Eric Yuan is pausing all new features for 90 days, and they really want to become a privacy and security first company. And I just want to say that we have been a Zoom partner from the very beginning. We're an, a certified Zoom partner, and I can test to saying that Zoom moves quickly when it comes to new features, but they also are, are willing to step back and take things seriously. And you can learn more at zoom.us slash security if you really want to dig into the deep details of what Zoom is doing from a security standpoint. So over the past couple of weeks, we talked about how to host a virtual Zoom party with live trivia, how to embed your Zoom meetings onto your website, but we didn't ever talk about Zoom meeting security. So that's what we're doing today. And I think it's super important. Um, our next tutorial will be on how to control PTZ optics and Huddlecam HD cameras using the PTZ camera control feature, which is the little known feature in Zoom. So as a company, we've been talking a lot about how to do these public live streams that include Zoom video conferences and Zoom meetings are usually private meetings, but there's been a bunch of blending of this technology, hosting public met webinars, private webinars, small breakout sessions. And the best advice I can give someone is to choose the right technology for the job. If you have a one-way broadcast that's a public announcement, just use live streaming. There's no need to have collaboration and two-way communication that could open up even possible security loopholes and you don't have to worry about all of this stuff. But when we do want to have a Zoom meeting, you want to keep the party crashers from crashing your Zoom event. And this is kind of a funny little picture that Zoom posted on their blog, but now it's not funny anymore. We really want to teach you guys how to securely have Zoom meetings. So the first thing to do, this is from an end user perspective, when you schedule your meeting, require a meeting password. This is generally not chosen by default, but Zoom is changing a lot of that now and requiring that by default for anyone who has a free um, license and then they're working on inc inc including that in more people. But this is probably not done by default. So make sure you do that. And also there's an advanced options area that's usually nested. I had never opened this. I barely ever used it, but now it's important to understand what this does. It allows you to enable that meeting, that waiting room area where you can have a higher level of control and you can basically let in people or not let in people if you don't know them or don't think that they should be there. So that waiting room feature is really important to know about. Um, you can also lock your meeting. So once everyone that you think should be in your meeting is in your meeting, you can go to the participants tab and you can lock your meeting. This allows you to not let anyone in after you have everyone you believe should be in there. A couple other things that we'll, we'll review in this video is how to allow participants to unmute themselves and rename themselves, muting participants on entry, for example, because from a management perspective as the host, you may need to mute people who have accidentally left their microphone on or who are being you know, kind of rambunctious and not really productive in your meeting. Now, there are advanced admin Zoom security settings that the admins can manage, but today, and really for most users, you just need to look at your personal settings. This is, these are advanced settings that are for your admins. The personal Zoom meeting settings are available in your Zoom dashboard when you sign in under the settings area. And this is where you can set up a lot of these security features to be in place by default, which is what you generally want. For example, you might not want to use your personal meeting ID when you schedule a meeting by default. 
Your personal meeting ID never changes. And if that does get out into the public, people can Zoom bomb you much easier. So you might not want to use your personal meeting ID for an instant meeting. This was on by default for me, I believe, or at least I had it on. And that's not a good thing. I, I think that unless you really need to use your personal meeting ID, you should probably shy away from it. Um, you can only authent use authenticated users to join your meeting, which is another layer of security. You can require a password when scheduling new meetings, require a password for instant meetings, and then you can also um, require a password for your personal meetings. Now, when it comes to controlling the participants, you have a management in here to allow, remove participants to rejoin. You may come at a time when you have to kick someone out of your Zoom meeting, especially if you're doing a public Zoom meeting or a Zoom party and someone is getting rowdy and doing something wrong, you have to remove them. You may not want them to be able to rejoin. So this allows you to not allow remove participants to rejoin. And then another thing to think about is probably not allowing participants to rename themselves because if someone starts renaming themselves, you it's harder for you to manage who is who in your meetings. So just to recap, managing participants and hosting Zoom parties, don't use your personal meeting ID. Use the waiting room feature. Now that does require a little bit of management, but you can have a co-host manage this for you. We always have a co-host who's managing all of this while we're live streaming. You can remove the ability for screen sharing. So only you as the host can screen share. That's a nice protective measure. You can lock the meeting. You can remove unwanted participants directly from the participant menu, and you can mute all participants. Now, in order to restrict who can share, just go to the advanced sharing options in the sharing button at the bottom, and you can say only the host can share. So that's it really. Just keep in mind, you know, basically use live streaming for public broadcasts. When it comes to live streaming, the only security issue is your secret key that is used to connect to Facebook or YouTube. With Zoom meetings, you, you are having more of a public and shared community experience where more management is required. So don't forget to leave a comment below. Let me know if you have had some issues. We had a Zoom party on our live stream and someone said the F word during our live broadcast. So I really wish that our co-host, my co-host Tess, knew about a lot of these features. So we're gonna be having everyone muted by default. We're gonna have people use the raise hand feature and we're gonna manually be unmuting people to have better control over our Zoom meetings. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and take care everybody.